has expired. The question is that the bill be read a second time. I call the member for line. Thank you, Mr. De Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. This is a tough budget. It had to be. To make the analogy of the mortgage, the Australian House had been paid for. The mortgage had been paid off. We had savings in the bank, but in the space of six years, we slowly, as a nation, had all our savings spent for us. The house had been remortgaged, then mortgaged again for another five years, so that the mortgage was greater than the value of the house. And then they mortgaged it a bit more and started paying the bill off with a credit card. It is such a good analogy. And that's the situation we're in. So that's why this budget had to be tough, Mr Deputy Speaker. We promised to stop the boats. We promised to end the waste. We promised to build the roads of the 21st century. And we promised, most importantly, to get the budget back under control. We've in introduced and implemented policies necessary to stop the boats. We haven't had uh, arrivals for over five months now. We've begun investing in Australia's biggest infrastructure program with $50 billion to be spent up to 2019. We're cutting red tape and getting rid of the waste. And earlier this, uh, in this parliament, uh, we introduced measures to cut over 700 million already in federal red tape costs. We're getting the budget back under control. Now, the reality, Mr Deputy Speaker, if we'd continued on that spending binge, wasting money on things like school hall rip-offs, broken down laptops and billions of dollars in deficit, our gross debt at the end of 2024, just 10 years uh, in the future, would have reached $667 billion. And the interest rate on our current debt equates to $12 billion a year and that's rising. $12 billion, that is an amazing amount of money, Mr Deputy Speaker. Within the, the last two uh, governments of Rudd and Gillard and Rudd, the millions that were offered and quoted as huge amounts of money slowly rolled into billions, and people have got blasé about debt. But what could you do with $12 billion? We could be building a four-lane divided highway from Sydney to Brisbane every year. We could build 40 state-of-the-art regional base hospitals. Better still, the Medical Research Future Fund that we're creating, we could have established two or three of those over the last six years. So look, Mr Deputy Speaker, there are short-term measures which have changed the situation for the nation but they had to be made so that there's long-term repair. We want to be back on track being a competitive nation, <coughs> capable of tackling the challenges that the world throws up. We're dependent to a large degree on the Chinese economy. What, were, what would happen to our economy if there was <coughs> turmoil in China? Who thought there was the Arab Spring? What would happen to the economy there if there was a Chinese Spring? Who knows what could happen? We're building infrastructure that will deliver long-term productivity gains. It will create employment with a runoff in associated industries. And we'll be in a much better situation to cope with any international economic shocks. Now, contrary to Labor's um, misinformation campaign, pensions will continue to rise. They will go up twice a year for the term of this parliament, according to the current indexation and then it will go up according to CPI. Education spending will increase over this, uh, over this parliament. And to put things in perspective, some of these figures are annual assistance to the states for public hospitals will increase by more than 9% each year uh, over the next three years and then 4% in the fourth year. That's a massive increase for the state expenditure. The funding to, in, to run public hospitals will increase by more than $5 billion, from $13.8 billion this year to $18.9 billion in 
uh, 18. Overall health, spend, overall health spending will increase by 10 billion or 16 per cent, from 64.5 billion to 74.8 billion in 2007 and 18. Plus, we will have created the Medical Research Future Fund, which will in itself deliver growth in efficiencies in the way we deliver health care, because that's where all the advances that we take for granted have come from. Also, contrary to the misinformation campaign that has hit the airwaves since the budget was released, there will be a record recurrent funding investment of $64.5 billion in schools over the next four years from the federal government. As I mentioned, uh, the pension isn't being reduced. It will increase again this September. Age pensioners will be better off as well because by cutting the carbon tax, that annual cost of $550 to every household will be reduced. The energy supplement will continue. The pension supplement will continue. Now, the demographic in the nation is changing. By 2035, one in three of us will live to be 100. By that time, there will be a 400 per cent increase in those over 85 years of age. We have to make things sustainable. The age pension has already been changed to 67 by the previous government in future years from 2023, but by 2035 we're giving a whole generation of people the chance to plan for their pension eligibility age um, by 2035. And the reason for that is there will be twice as many of us that are in the state requiring government support. At the moment, 80 per cent of people over 65 end up relying on a pension. If that doubles, it's, with increases over time, it would simply not be sustainable. The previous government recognised this. Governments overseas have realised this. We have to take the hard decisions now. Now, the other thing, Mr Deputy Speaker, is that just in this term, our debt, I've mentioned the 10-year debt projections, just in this four-year term, if we sat back and did nothing, which one, some members of the, on the other side of the House have recommended we do, we would be left with another $123 billion on top of the $200 billion we already owe. By means of this budget and the tough decisions, that 123 billion projected debt will be halved to 60 billion. And the 10-year debt will be down to 389 billion. These are massive amounts of debt. And if we don't address these changes, we would be in the situation of Greece, Ireland, Spain, all those nations that for the last 20 or 30 years have been living off the credit card. And most of these nations have got to the stage where the debt is so great it is beyond the means of the, any nation to finally get rid of it. So they're committed to paying massive amounts of interest on their national borrowings virtually forever. But nevertheless, all those nations that I've mentioned have redressed and are trying to get their debt under control. The same in the UK. They were in a situation where they realised things had to change. People should not be afraid of change if they realise it's for their long-term sustainability. We as a generation can't saddle our children and our children's children with paying perpetual amounts of the annual budget of the nation in interest payments. Now, the infrastructure spend that I'd mentioned is a massive build. Just in my electorate of line, we're, we're having $1.129 billion spent on the Pacific Highway dual lane expansion. That will deliver at least 1,000 direct jobs, probably the same number again in indirect jobs. It'll bring 
our part of the mid-north coast, closer to the Brisbane market. Transport costs will shrink because all the produce that we bring into the region and all the uh, product that we get out and our tourism product all relies on that Pacific Highway. So it will be a massive benefit. The Buckets Way, the artery of commerce in the southwest of the electorate, has been so long ignored by the last government. They made all sorts of pronouncements about improving it, but we're actually delivering $17.8 million, including GSD, to the Gloucester Council and the Greater Taree City Council in the term of this, in the term of this government. We've announced increases to black spots and roads to recovery funding, which is essential. When you see the state of some of the roads in the regions, they are no longer a bitumen surface. They are a collection, a mosaic of patches for stretches of hundreds and hundreds of metres, only with clean sheet every now and then, rather than the other way round where there should be the odd patch every now and again. And that leads to road safety improvement. Financial assistance grants are quarantined uh, to councils and they will continue. The deregulation of the higher education centre will mean there is an expansion of the demand-driven system. And with the budget estimates, and education uh, assessments, that will lead to hopefully another 80,000 students being enrolled in the education beyond school. The deregulation and the changes the budget bring in mean it will be delivered to alternate pathways into universities. Colleges with diplomas, associate diplomas, associate degrees, of which there are several in my region, will have students who can access Commonwealth supported places because we've expanded the number of institutions that attract Commonwealth funding. As well, the existing institutions that have the ability to raise fees will be putting into their own funds for Commonwealth scholarships. So one dollar in five of the money that they raise from the deregulation will go into that. So people with low socioeconomic capability and standing will have another fund to enhance their entry into higher education. Contributions from the savings with the co-payment will be delivered into the Medical Research Future Fund. What a great initiative. Medical research is something that Australian scientists are really good at. And if that can be used in some of the existing programs, the research can be sped up. New avenues of research can be uh, developed. There's so much intellectual capital in the scientific, particularly in the biomedical and the medical space, this will be really uh, an area of growth. If you look at all the medical scientists in Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane and Adelaide, the major centres and Perth, it's staggering. The amount of uh, spin off to the economy. Talk about growing a natural. The best business to grow in your own region are those that are already there. People look for these magical new industries, and they do come along all the time. But the quickest way to expand things is to do what you do now and do it and expand it. So that's what that Medical Research Future Fund will do. So, Mr. Deputy Speaker, there are many challenges that the nation faces. But this budget is addressing them. All the social good and every program that Australians rely on will come into question. Can you imagine if we don't make the tough decisions now? If we did, as one of the previous members mentioned, kick the problem down the road, which other countries overseas have done for decades, their chickens have come home to roost. We have to make the tough decisions, and that's what this budget does. But they've been responsible, they've been measured, and they are <coughs> necessary. I commend these bills to the House. Yeah. The question is that the bill be read a second time. I call the member.